constantly in a different direction while we in direction while we in different direction while we visualize we want we have the subconscious programs which is driving constantly in a different direction while we visualize we want to achieve something we set a goal i'm going to do really well this year in my academics i'm going to be waking up very early and do this from tomorrow many times we don't even dream because we have so many limiting beliefs this quantum model of creation that's something that we have been at buddha seo quantum foundation deeply exploring a quantum model of creation that is saying that our thoughts and feelings squarely create our reality independent of what your present situation present circumstance is to exactly do that to reprogram our subconscious mind fully towards something that supports us to realize our dreams i started a meditation from one year now but this is my first group meditation you could say it's been an amazing 21 journey and i feel a lot of confidence in myself i start to see little little changes right and i'm so happy that i've been part of this meditation class and it's been so good meditation is is for me like uh, to understand yourself better way this is the main definition for me uh, of meditation that to know yourself in a better way i think meditation give you uh, that kind of freedom that that you can uh, see yourself beyond uh, beyond yourself the best part of this whole meditation for me was the manifestation recently i have been trying to apply in canada for master programs but i was dealing with lots of negative results when i started this meditation and when i learned the manifestation thing i quickly started doing that i started to get lots of opportunities lots of ways of getting into colleges and again i have boost of my confidence level and i'm getting admissions in the colleges and i'll be traveling hello dear friends good afternoon good morning good evening to everyone So this is the Saturday master class. Yep. Hello Lawrence. Hi. Hello. Hello. I'll let you introduce then. I didn't yeah. see you. Sorry. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right. So hello hello everyone. Very good evening to India and very good morning to the rest. And uh, it's going to be uh, one of the wonderful master class today. And this is uh, again one of my favorite as well uh, by us. Uh, we are going to talk, listen from a, a great, amazing business leader, Lawrence Mam, who she will is going to talk about what, how we can overcome the, overcome the subconscious or unconscious bias. So before that, you know what is bias. Let me give you a very practical uh, example. Or uh, the, the before even two hours, just before two hours, I was attending a one of uh, the session from my friend, and uh, somehow I little joined late. when i joined late so my friend is uh, i could able to hear you know their voice the other end of the voice but the moment i joined uh, uh, my computer i just started the laptop it, it is trying to find that my audio setup is going on uh, but i the moment my friend is telling to other participants that you know ratnavel is as actually attending many uh, you know in fact he ratnavel is taking meditation sessions many so and he is having always challenge with his google meet so that is what you know he just made a judgment and he did it uh, told to other participants but the reality is i was just started the computer opened it and it was it was just taken some moment and trying to find the audio system this was the uh, thing happened so we all make a judgments without even knowing the reality without making know the reality the moment we see you know someone you know wearing some kind of uh, cloth or something we make immediately oh she must must be a rich person or rich girl or rich lady or she must be from a poor family we make lot of judgments maybe consciously or unconsciously but this is very very important because every time we make a judgment it's where you know it will hamper in your know, the spiritual path i i this is one of the how to improve your spiritual i think one of time i believe chandra sir has actually taken this class even myself i was uh, i was trying to figure out where i can improve my uh, my uh, improve my spiritual quotient this is where i could able to figure out yes i make little bit of uh, judgments this is how i make uh, you know but by, by from the family from at the work 
then I could able to figure out this problem. Okay, let me fix it. So we all make the tend to make the judgments very very easily because we uh, we learn from our um, from our family from whomever we grown up with. We tend to make easily the judgments. So, but how to overcome this one? And when we are at work, it is very very important. When you pick someone from the interview, oh, from this community or from this country or from this person, he must be a good person or he must be a bad person or he will be a very good. Something we make an unconscious, uh, you know, without even. uh uh you know seeing the reality without even making you know making uh, uh seeing the reality we make easily the judgments right so today in the master class we are going to listen from lawrence ma'am amazingly amazingly she has actually been in the sales role for more than 20 years you just think about a person who is in the sales role for more than 20 years she must be dealt with a lot of lot of you know the uh, people management the cultural difference like you have she has to deal with many uh, you know people Uh, the way that you talk to the same person it will be different for the other person in the other culture so she has to be very very conscious she has to be very very and handle everything properly and that is where you know today's master class is going to be very fantastic that's what i said is going to be one of the fantastic one uh, master class and she has managed uh, multiple large global organizations in the information technology sector and served as global business unit gm for more than 20 years and had to always you know be uh, uh, rush up for many other things like a uh, budget be at budget or be at any uh, challenging issues at work and the people management issues many many things and she has been a mentor to many mentees as well right when you are being a mentee then you have to understand what is their problem what is their where they are coming from and everything right you cannot make with your bias you cannot give a suggestion or advice to the your mentees just like that and above all very very important she is a mother of she is wife and mother of two boys and she lived in france singapore and united states based on uh, new york but until recently she was general manager at ibm services as well as corporate sponsor for mindfulness at ibm she has been introducing and teaching meditation to thousands of leaders and professionals she decided to settle in france and devote her time to teaching meditation and mindfulness in the corporate and academic world as well as engaging in other meditation initiatives as well She is committed to supporting people with disabilities. I admire her a lot. She went. She talks about her son. How she has been dealt with that. To be honest, when you know, when I was, uh, I, I I also had some kind of thoughts. Oh, uh, when dealing with the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, dealing with any people who has the disabilities. So she she has been a wonderful and strong woman as well in that woman leader. There is lot and lot always to. you know it makes a very very happy it, it will be like a music for your ears to listen from anything you know whatever she comes and she in the in the last in the morning session of uh, our star she has actually very wonderfully she talked about how nature uh, contributes to the meditation and how we can actually you know contribute ourselves and talk she talked about nice day about the vegetarianism as well and uh, hello everyone please give a grand welcome to our guest speaker and great speaker and uh, she's kind of yeah, in fact a music speaker because it will be a, whatever she talks it will be music to our ear so lauren uh, gihad jolly former senior general manager mindfulness sponsor ibm corporation co founder both are cf quanta foundation welcome you ma'am yeah thank thank you so much um, i think you made the master class within a few minutes so uh, but thanks for the nice uh, introduction and uh, very proud uh, as a co-founder of buddha ceo to uh, to be talking to you some of you may have been in the morning session for me it was middle of the night but you see thanks to meditation i'm still up and running uh, for this uh, for this class it's very dear to my heart so we will do uh, now 5 minutes uh, just introduction about the topic and then go to meditation and after that i will uh, give you some uh, clarification about why do we have you know unconscious bias what is it how does it manifest how can we identify them and you know step by step and try to tackle them because we all have unconscious bias that's normal uh, but we have the richness the gift of meditation to become aware of them and just before there i'm going to tell also a story which to illustrate you know how unconscious bias can can be there without you you know knowing about it so it's um it's a manager a woman she's very good manager uh she always look for equality uh between uh, you know men and women or various culture 
our own conscious values are to make sure that everybody is treated equally. Of course, equally depending on their performance, you know, their job roles and so on, but equally. And she tells a story that one day, it's not me, it's, I, I, I read about that story, which was powerful. She said that, you know, one day she goes to the office and as she goes to her own office, she's crossing the open space. And then there is a, a guy working in our team who is telling her, hey, uh, I would like to have an appointment with you. I would like to uh, talk about, uh, you know, my opportunities and, and also, you know, uh, how could I get promoted? And I made some research and, you know, I, be, I feel that my compensation is not, you know, aligned with the market. Our reaction is immediately the manager to say, okay, uh, let's, meet at, uh, let's meet at 10 in my office. We can discuss that, no problem. So she keeps walking and uh, take a coffee. And as, as she's a coffee machine, there is uh, one of her team member, but this time it is a woman who is approaching her and pretty much on the same topic to say, hey, um, I would like to have a discussion with you. I feel that um, maybe I deserve a little more. I have discussed with people and looked at the market. I got some also proposal from outside. So I would like to have a, just a quick discussion with you. And in that case, facing this you know, professional woman, the manager reacts right away without thinking, I would say, and say, really? You really think that uh, there is a problem? How come? Well, um, you know, let me think about it, but uh, I think uh, there is no real problem. And then, of course, the, the, her teammate goes away and the manager takes the coffee. But then over the day, she starts to think about it because she's practicing actually meditation and mindfulness. And she's like, what just happened in the morning? What just happened to me? Why do I react in this way? She has been in courses about unconscious bias. So something is in her head and say, why did I say, hey, let's talk at 10 to a guy, a man? And why did I contest to the same request from a woman? Even if my values are everybody deserves the same treatment. So our conscious values is equality. She's a very professional, very engaged, very good manager. But her unconscious bias took a shortcut. And because it was a woman, and she's a woman, but it was a woman asking her, she kind of reacted as, you sure? So you see how unconscious bias can drive this judgment, this reaction that most of the time are even against our own conscious values. So that's what we try to benefit from the mindfulness that comes from the meditation practice to tackle them because it can lead to misunderstanding, confusion, pain. Okay, you can hurt somebody. It can miss, you can miss also some great business opportunities. Um, you can have the wrong reaction in front of your child, in front of your teenagers, all of this, you know, and as we learn about this unconscious bias, we can really change. And let me share something before we go into meditation. I love this view behind, so that's why I took it as a, you know, as a background of my screen. But before we go into the meditation, just I will clarify a few definitions, okay, that will print in your brain and you know help in the meditation we're gonna have. Everybody talks about diversity. You know, diversity is actually categorizing groups, you know, uh, to differentiate groups of people or, or individuals, um, you know, between each other. You know, uh, if you are in the US, uh, you can be, uh, you know, from uh, a Latino, I mean, Spanish culture, or you can be, uh, you know, white, you are classified, or you can be, uh, you know, from universities or just from high school or whatever. So these are groups, of course, women and men, and so on. That's 
important to ma manage having diversity because it's the richness of any organization, any community. The more diverse people, the more new ideas coming from different backgrounds, culture, perspectives, and so on. Okay, so meditation is helping us to feel comfortable and actually to research, search for you know diversity, you know to learn more, to have more experience, to elevate our consciousness and our spiritual journey. But inclusiveness is the next step, and that's where I want you to 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 go. In a sense, inclusiveness is is more about becoming aware and mindful that for some groups, the life might be more challenging or completely different from what they have been living before when they arrive in a country, not really speaking well the language, for instance, having to get to know everybody. When I was in Singapore, I couldn't understand uh, how to memorize all the names of the people from Thailand, Malaysia, you know, and Indonesia. I was the general manager, but so what? My brain couldn't, you know, perceive this. So I was slow. Sometimes I was slow and, you know, it felt like for some people I was dumb and dull because I wanted people to repeat and I was taking notes and they probably, with their judgment, thought, who is this lady from, you know, US uh, or France, not able to memorize my name, but it was sometimes in time on names long like that. Okay. So, Inclusiveness is not just invited people to a ball. It's invited pe inviting people to dance and to take action and to feel comfortable and protected and secure, encouraged by the organization. So they can feel they can contribute. And so they will have this human being absolute need of being wanted, being loved, being accepted, and you know, being actively engaged into a community. That, that's what we all need. That's what we all need. This is really something that is deep, deep, deep inside everyone. So when we are in a place where inclusiveness is a practice, is part of the culture, you know, we feel more accepted, we feel more wanted, and we feel more motivated, inspired to contribute our you know, background, our knowledge, our energy. And that's creating the most powerful organization, the mo most powerful business, you know, um, the most powerful communities of family. Okay, of course, we all know families where you, know, uh, you have a daughter or you have a son and uh, they want to marry someone who might be for a completely different culture. You know, that's where we as human beings are tested. That's where you know, full inclusiveness down to our bones and DNA has to be understood, identified, and active. And of course, when it's about life or job, that's what creates this mental and physical health, even longevity. We have this satisfaction you know, to engage. So that's why it's so critical. And of course, one of the key challenge to be in full inclusiveness mode, if I may, is, that, is the unconscious bias. There are multiple unconscious bias that we have in ourselves. So that's what we're gonna talk about you know, in, uh, in our masterclass after the meditation. Okay, and some of you may have heard that, but I encourage you to hear again because it's still there. I still have unconscious bias. And sometimes, wow, I catch myself thinking this or reacting this way, even if it's completely opposite to my values as a meditator and my spiritual journey. So it's always there. And that's something we can teach our children also because the way we react by shortcut and unconscious bias will influence directly our kids react also because they are going to copy what you are doing and it's going to become a program in their unconscious mind that will reproduce again and again so as Ravinael was saying it's something we all get from childhood and social environment so that's going to be the topic of the master class and before we go there we are going to 
have a meditation that I will guide uh, with, uh, with music. So as usual, we practice breath mindfulness meditation. All right. And uh, you're going to sit comfortably on a chair, on the floor, on a sofa. You can take back support if it's needed just to make sure that your body is comfortable so your body will not distract you during the meditation. So I encourage you to cross your hand, join your hands like that, fingers into fingers. So you start creating a loop of energy inside yourself. If that's comfortable for your knees, you can cross also the legs at the ankle again to create this loop of energy inside yourself. We're going to close the eyes. 80% of the energy of our senses goes through the eyes. So we're going to keep the energy inside. I'm going to play music and guide the meditation. The only thing you have to do is to tell your mind to focus on your breath. If you have glasses, take them off. Put them on the floor, on, on, on the table. You don't need them. If you have also a kind of Apple Watch or some electronics on you, I encourage you to take them off and put them you know, somewhere else. And of course, silent your iPhone or cell phone or smartphone, you know, for the meditation. And let's enjoy meditation. It's a fun activity. It's like taking a, a dive in the sea and, uh, and enjoying yourself, especially on Saturday, Saturday night. So you can have a wonderful Saturday end of evening and night. Okay, so I'm going to play music and... Uh, Atina Vell, you're going to tell me uh, if the voice yes. and uh, the sound is okay. Let me go. Playlist. Share. Okay. Can you hear the music okay and my voice okay? Yes, okay, ma'am. Nothing Your to change. Okay. Okay. okay, and the music is okay? No, music is also okay. All right, perfect. So, dear friends, let's start by taking a long, slow breath. Breathing in, breathing out. going to tell your mind first to entirely focus on your feet grounded on the floor from heels to toes just try to visualize them feel them And you're going to move your attention to your knees, the left knee, the right knee banded. Then slowly move your attention to your legs, the left, the right, relax. And you can be grateful for them to carry you all day long. That's a gift. Then you move your mind, your full attention to your low back, the bottom of your spine. Relax and slowly go up, slowly slowly to your shoulders. Relax the shoulders once. Relax twice. Feel like a mountain. With dignity standing. Then move your attention 
to your head and your face, the 40 muscles on your face. Become mindful and relax your forehead, your eye bones, the cheeks, the jaw, the tongue in the mouth. take the journey inside, go inside your chest, go inside and search for your heart, try to feel your heart, visualize your heart beating in your chest, listen Listen inside. The full beautiful universe. Your heart beating. The core of all emotions. Gratitude. Care. Compassion. Enthusiasm, joy, your beautiful heart beating 24 by 7 with you. And bring to your heart, to your mind and your body, a beautiful memory where you felt joy, or love, or compassion, happiness, love. Bring that to your heart. Remember. And you can smile. Feel the beautiful emotion spreading from your heart to every one of the billions of cells running on your skin. Creating coherence between your mind and your heart. Flow of beautiful energy. dear friends, let's go into breath mindfulness meditation. You're going to tell your mind to just observe, to just be the observer of your normal, standard, peaceful breath. Your breath is your best friend. Your breath is always, always with you, wherever you are, days and night. Just be with the breath.
feel the air coming in a bit cooler and coming out a bit warmer. At this stage, you are entirely still. The only thing moving inside you is the flow of the air coming in and out of your body. If you have thoughts distracting you, that's okay, that's normal, no worry and no judgment, just notice the thoughts and move them out gently, then you bring back your attention to your in-breath and out-breath and you do that again and again and again a million times if needed just go back to the breath
as we meditate all together in this powerful group meditation each of us is letting go the doing and create space for the being So for once, allow yourself to forget everything about your life, to forget everything about yourself. To forget everything about the past and just observe be an observer, be a witness of your breath. As we breathe, we welcome the air from the outer world. with an open mind.
be with your breath. Keep observing the in breath and out breath. And as you merge with your breath, your mind will become slowly and slowly quiet. Let go of everything you know. Just become the breath. If you still have thoughts distracting you, that's okay. Move the thoughts out gently and bring back your attention to your breath, dear friends. As you become one with the breath, create space of emptiness notice if you can start feeling some kind of emptiness inside you and even all around you. Notice any sensation. And keep breathing.
as we focus on the breath. As we merge with the breath and quiet the mind, we create emptiness. Emptiness is energy. When we meditate, we go and find the source of our infinite energy. As you become one with your breath, allow yourself to go deeper and deeper into this feeling of emptiness inside you. where there is no one, where there is nothing, no place and no time.
the universe is limitless, is of infinite energy. Your energy is limitless. You are limitless. Be with your breath. Emptiness is energy in a quantum field of energy. A field of infinite possibilities and opportunities. Allow yourself to tune in this abundance of energy inside you and all around you. Become one with your breath. Become one with this energy, this empowerment energy, this healing energy. miraculous energy, this joy and love energy, or whatever you can become aware of. You become one with the universe. With the infinite richness of experience.
Now, dear friends, keep your eyes closed. Stay with your breath. And I'm going to ask you to pick up one person you want to be grateful for today. Building gratitude, this high emotion, a higher state of receivership. Pick up one person. It can be a stranger, somebody you just met, a close friend, somebody very different from you. And build gratitude for this person. For being alive. And probably discover a friend behind a stranger face. Be grateful. for your ability to meet so many people and smile to this person. Let the gratitude fill your heart, your body, your mind. Let your heart send a flow gratitude to every cell in your body. Billions of cells dancing gratefully. The chill on your skin feeling the joy of gratitude. And you can send love, health, great wishes Let the flow of kindness become you. Keep your eyes closed. Let this flow of gratitude, energy settle into your body, your mind, your heart. Reconnect with your body. connect with the experience of the meditation you just had. And whenever you are ready, you can slowly put your hands on your eyes. And come back slowly to the world by counting five, four, Three, two, one. Welcome back. Welcome back, dear friends. I hope you had a nice meditation wherever you are, morning one or evening one. A nice dive into the ocean of your inner self. 
opening the mind of favor one of yourself to become the most welcoming and inclusive person and plant the seed of inclusiveness around you. That's my wish to you. You're going to be so happy with that. So going into the unconscious bias, a little science, a little learning to help you identify what we mean by unconscious bias and how we can work them out to improve our life, but also to improve our health, as well as to improve the life of others, of course. And if you are, you know, a business professional or even a family leader, if I may, or home CEO, you know, how to make uh, the life easier at home. So let's go through some material. So for you to visualize some example, examples. Okay, we are all different, right? We all have emotions, we all have a background. We all have education and messages that were given to us by, you know, the family, the teachers, the friends, depending on our age. And we have been storing this like a sponge, especially between our, you know, birth and the seven years old age, taking at the first degree everything that was happening as a way to live or to behave. Don't do this, don't do that, don't go at night. You know, it's dangerous. Don't go in the rain, you're gonna freeze. Don't talk to stranger, they are dangerous. Don't listen to this or this person, they don't know what they are talking about. Oh, this guy has a very strong accent. Must not be that smart. Look, he has a hole in his jeans. Poor guy. Well, maybe he's the richest Texan guy, you know, visiting New York, full of pocket full of dollar. You don't know, as Hativa Navel was saying. So we all have this unconscious bias. They are part of us. They are stereotypes judgment and behavior we attribute to others without knowing them. We look at someone, we see something, we hear something, then immediately we make a judgment about how they are. And this is not judging every one of us by saying that. It's there. It's in our unconscious, you know, the 90% of ourselves that is unconscious. This is a, a kind of autopilot. It is a kind of routine and shortcut between actually our, you know, two lower brain, the reptilian and the limbic system. So reptilian being the survival. Unconscious bias can be, be built from survival brain. So that's why it's stored so hard. It's hard wire and we're going to have to identify it and work on it by repetition to get some of these, you know, out. Walking at night, hearing a noise, somebody's coming in front of us. We are alone, there is no light. This person looks different from me. This is the reptilian brain that is waking up and sending the message. I was told, I was told, I was told, I have here, I have seen that it's a dangerous situation. So it's there. Sometimes it's protecting us. Most of the time, it's not, it's just conditioning. So these unconscious bias are building shortcuts in our brain and make us react even many, many times, often in conflict with our conscious values. As I was saying the story about this manager, we say, I'm certainly not a racist. 
I'm all for diversity. But we identified, and especially as we meditate and practice mindfulness, sometimes some you know, primary reaction that could be qualified as racist because we are afraid or because we judge something that has been told. You know, I'm living at home because of my handicapped son with somebody who's from Thailand. Now, since a year and a half, complete different culture from the US or French culture. Different way of, you know, body language, you know, tone of voice. Sometimes we believe she's angry and actually she's very happy, but the way they talk is different from us. So you learn about that and now it's made it's part of the something that is a richness to know this. Culture where people will never dare apologize. Where apologizing is like, wow, the end of the world. People, you know, around us that don't want to uh, look, you know, lose face. I learned that in Asia. So all have different things. And so we cannot make this shortcut and judge based on our unconscious bias. So again, it's a learning here. It's learning how to be aware of this reaction, identify them maybe one by one, maybe observing ourselves when we see that, to identify the ones that are the most you know, frequent in our behaviors. And that's where they are stored, right? You have seen this in uh, you know, many uh, programs, but that's thanks to meditation that we can cross this analytical mind, we can go and dig into the programs that we have in our unconscious and identify some of the unconscious bias that came from culture. And what I'm trying, for instance, to do now is because we have the power now of, you know, internet and, you know, billions of movies, but always to select, you know, movies from another part of the world, you know, to identify new culture. And I always listen to the original version with a subtitle because I want to hear the voice and the tone and I'm learning a lot. These days, for instance, I'm watching a movie about this culture of the Jew in Israel, but the Orthodox one, you know, because up to now, when I was seeing, seeing this group of people, uh, especially in, in Brooklyn, when I was in uh, New York, you know, I had some reaction from that, some judgment. And so I'm, I'm selecting things that will help me identify and understand better, you know, the sculptures. And how, by the way, they make movies. What are the values they are promoting and things like that. So we all have this ability to decide to learn. And by learning more, we can fight I mean, or identify at least our unconscious bias. So there are many, many ways to do it. So in this unconscious, we know that, you know, you, are, you, you will learn more or you have learned about how meditation is helping us to increase our spiritual quotient, you know, and, you know, from a fixed mind to a gross mind that we understand that we have unlimited potential. We had maybe an unconscious bias that we don't, okay? That we are limited, we will not, be able to learn music forever because the family was not good and we were told we will not be good. So you know that. We have been told there is not enough in the world for everybody to eat you know, properly. There is not enough, but it's also a conditioning. And as we meditate, we re-question how the food is produced, what people are eating, what kind of changes should be made even at the highest level of the economy to provide to everyone. But if we go a little deeper in our personal unconscious biases and where we can make a change, it's, we, we may not change the way the food is produced in the world tomorrow. It's quite complicated, but these things that we can change will have an impact, will help create you know, a better world and more inclusiveness. And when we do that, you know, we have an inner transformation that helps us address the rest of the problem of the world. So unconscious bias 
of course, affect our attitude toward you know, the group of people. And I gave you here the most common one. And uh, Atinavel mentioned the clothes, you know, and it can be also the physical aspect. We judge people because of their height or because of their weight. You know, oh, this person is too fat. How oh, it's not controlling. It's like that, it comes to our mind. Even we fight against it, it comes. You know, disabilities, people with disabilities cannot contribute to the society. Might be something we have heard. Oh, it's a shame. I have a kid disabled, I need to hide. A lot of culture I have discovered have this kind of behavior coming from the past where actually we should do the opposite. So we accelerate the integration inclusiveness of people with disabilities. That's on us. The age, we judge vis-a-vis -vis the age. So it can be at the office, it can be in community. It has an impact, but some example here, you know, this height. I was, when I was preparing that, that, that course, I mean, that masterclass, you know, I was reading that only 15% of the American men are above six feet tall. But the CEOs of American company, they are mostly men, 60% of the CEOs are above six feet. 15% of the overall population of men, but 60% of the CEOs. Is there not an unconscious bias that if you are tall, you are smarter? We can be more confident in you. You're going to have more influence. You are stronger. That's purely unconscious bias. And it affects people. I remember my, one of my uh, big boss, you know, one day told me, and I was very surprised. He said, my career is at the maximum. And I said, why? You are super smart, super successful. You know, you are very good at what you are doing. Why are you saying that? You are maybe only, uh, whatever, 45. He said, because I am too small. I will never achieve if I stay in this kind of company to get to the top. Because all the CEOs of this company have been very tall people up to now. And there is a bias that if you are small, you are less, I would say, influential or performing or you name it. So you see, it's vis-a-vis -vis our perception, uh, values, but going to the facts. And that's where you identify the unconscious bias you know, in our society. Of course, this cartoon about this lady, I had the same situation for me and so many women have the same experience. You know, I had a, a boss who was super nice and was behaving nearly like a father and, you know, like protecting. But it was always a fight to get the, the biggest project or to get a promotion. Because when I was younger, you know, you would always think that, uh, okay, maybe uh, the first or the second baby will come and she won't be uh, concentrated on focus on, uh, on performing at work. So you might have the best resume and the best experience and the best energy and motivation, but unconsciously, a manager will make a decision, you know, from the unconscious bias. And even, you know, because a lot of studies have been done about interviews for hiring, even if this person has been briefed, okay, and they have consciously values of equality, at the end of the day, when you look at the statistic, you know, the choice are more comfortable to choose a, a man. So we have to know about this and we need to speak up as meditator when, when it happens. Speak up and explain is the best. And we can teach our kids. We can teach. It's not because somebody has a accent means that they are dull. I remember another friend 
was also, uh, you know, he, he had a very, very high job in France and he moved to the US. And he said, I was feeling so bad because people would look at me like I'm dumb. Uh, when, when there was a big uh, conflictual argument, a good one, a professional one, and I wanted to argue for my position, I didn't have enough words and vocabulary and the right tone to say it. And people would smile at me like I'm dull. Actually, this guy was extremely good at what he was doing. So the country where he was sent missed an opportunity. Okay, so that's coming again and again, but we can, by being aware and mindful, identify when it comes to us. It can also create other types of problems because of this unconscious bias, it will make people hide sometimes because we know their unconscious bias, we feel them. And we had this professor in New York telling us, you know, that after a survey done by NYU, New York University, they had discovered that 70% of the white men, I think it was, you know, between 40 and 50s or between 30s and 50 years old, were hiding something. They were hiding just for avoiding the impact of unconscious bias. As I'm going to have another kid, I don't want to tell my manager because they will believe I'm not going to be, you know, so performant and I cannot take this or this promotion or whatever. Or I am sick and sometimes it was dramatic. I have cancer. I need chemo, but I won't, I won't tell my boss because they will immediately classify me as, okay, I'm done. Somewhere less dramatic, I am playing guitar in a rock band every Saturday night. I have a ponytail that I try to hide, but I won't look very serious if people know uh, about it. So people are hiding, which is not good because we need this flow of diverse energy. And even when it's all about sickness. So we have some unconscious bias, even if we try to be consciously very, uh, I would say, positive and welcoming, you know, we might have this unconscious bias that mental illness, it's not real, people are making that up. And they should come and work and why would we care? Okay, if we look well, so this person look well, so she's not sick. A lot of people look well, but they might have even disabilities that cannot be seen and they suffer from it. They suffer from the ignorance and, and indifference of others about it. Or, you know, you are disabled, you cannot work. No disability, no, you cannot. So it makes people hide. I take the case of, you know, illness, but there are many others about culture, about language, and so on. So we have this fast judgment, and at the same time, we have people who are hiding who they are, and we are losing a lot. You know, when probably you saw that in the office, when somebody is sick and is able to talk about it, and the manager is able to show compassion and also vulnerability, usually the impact is amazing because the group will reunite with more energy, more willing to help. The families will connect better among the colleagues and so on. And that's building strength for the group forever. Reinforcing these bonds that we were talking about. I am loved, I am wanted. It happens to me one time. I had a, somebody in my team who uh, was in UK. And um, we were given a budget for a very, very big bonus, very big, you know, thank you bonus in money, financial one. And this person had done such an amazing job that when it was time to make a selection, we selected this person to have it. And it was a lot of money. So we sent uh, this and um, we organized a call. And there was no answer. 
So we made some, you know, calls and search for the local people. I was in New York, so in London, to see what was happening. And we ended up by actually, I ended up by having a call with the wife. And she said, um, he cannot accept that. He just discovered he has cancer, he's in chemo, it's urgent. It's, uh, you know, a stage where he has to urgently treat him. And we don't know if he will be even able any time to come back to work. So that's where your emotional intelligence, your mindfulness, your compassion is at the best. So what I decided, what my managers decided, of course, we're going to give this performance bonus. And by the way, we're going to call on a regular basis and everybody started to send, you know, go well message and take care. And you can imagine for the wife, the kids, and of course the colleague itself, receiving all this love was an amazing way of helping him to recover, which he did. So, you know, that's why we need to speak up and be aware of, oh no, this person uh, will not go back to work. You know, let's, let's move to somebody else. And then you have this unconscious bias that are really impacting negatively the uh, organization. And that's something that we teach inside organization to recognize them. One of the obvious one is when you see this cartoon with everybody looking the same. The human being has a trend to hire, to put people around himself or herself that look the same. Oh, you come from the same city. You come from the same university. Oh, you come from the same high school. We have similar memories. We were living in similar you know, uh, places, residential, you know, places. We have been to the same uh, parties and so on. So it, we can work together, obviously the same. But how can you have an innovative organization if everybody has the same background, the same view, the same education, coming from the same school? How do you create a breakthrough you know, in your product lines, in your offerings, in the way you treat problems at, at work, if everybody comes from the same place. So the richness is really to identify this unconscious bias and create diverse team and create real inclusiveness culture. We also have this unconscious bias that we have at work, but we have also that in family reunion at home. It's called, you know, the confirmation bias. We believe about something. We, we have an opinion about something. We say, I'm smart. I've been studying, I'm reading, I'm an open mind, I'm a good person. Uh, consciously, I'm all of this. But we discover through research and survey and so on, that what you're gonna do unconsciously is to identify everything that will confirm your opinion, just to be able to say, I'm right. So your unconscious bias will select, you know, what to identify, what facts, what articles, what uh, quotes, whatever is going in your direction. And you will unconsciously let go all the articles and books and whatever that are saying the opposite or something different. So again, for yourself and your spiritual growth, it's limiting what you can find. And it puts you in a place also where you always want to be right when actually the interest of life is to listen to other perspectives and question, hmm, I am not seeing that this way. And it can go you know, to the relationship you know, uh, parents have at home. So many times we fight just to be right. But when we stop, when we breathe, and when we listen, even 30 seconds, and when we are able, 
to forget our ego, to let it at the door, which is the objective of meditation too, and to realize, hey, what you just propose is pretty good actually. I know internally you're going to say, how could I not think about this great idea? But then thanks to meditation, yes, you let go and you listen and you get you know, new, uh, new ideas. So confirmation bias is very, very frequent and can lead to reports, to um, you know, business proposals uh, and so on that might not be really what the market wants. And you can miss a market. And I have missed market in the past because I wanted to be confirming that my idea was great, but I was not really going deep into what the market really wanted. So you can make mistakes or miss opportunity because of this confirmation bias. Okay, you, you have many also, you know, of course, um, you have, you know, this, um, Conformity. So conformity means I'm joining a new group, a new team, and unconsciously I'm going to try to be looking like them. Of course, of course, happen a lot at school, especially with teenagers, because I have this, you know, willingness to be loved and wanted and integrated. So I'm going to do everything they do or always be in agreement with what they think. And, and at the end of the day, I will start really thinking like them. So it's another unconscious bias that can lead to poor performance or to lose the richness of you know, diverse people. So it's just a flavor, but I think you get it. And with meditation, you're gonna learn about yourself and your bias. And my tip to you is um, don't be defensive. Acknowledge that you have biases, unconscious biases. Just try to identify them maybe one by one. Take notes. Maybe focus on one or two that are really always there and surprises you and make you say things that you might regret. You acknowledge, okay? And you keep meditating about this. That's really key. And really mindfulness is helping you because you're going to be alert and aware of your present moment and your emotion. So when you feel an emotion, you're going to start thinking, where is it coming from? What did that make me tell that I wouldn't tell if the emotion was not there because it's against my values? Work with others. Maybe find a friend, a few friends, or just if you are in a team, take this topic and talk about it because it's common to everybody. I don't know anybody who has zero unconscious bias. Okay, so we just select how you want others to help and engage. Okay, and it's also as a leader, as a manager, it's a way to show this knowledge about ourselves, this willingness to learn and the vulnerability that we acknowledge and that we want to change some things that we believe are not the right things to do. And of course you can share your findings. And as always, every time you make a step in the right direction, you need to celebrate yourself, loving yourself, encouraging yourself, you know, celebrating every single victory is the best way to learn because you send plenty of gratitude and energy and this feeling starting to wire you know strongly in your brain every time you you find one of these unconscious bias and you are able to control what you are saying or maybe to ask for forgiveness or to rectify what you just said like this manager went back you know to this woman professional to say oh okay annie you know, we will meet this afternoon. I have a 2 p.m. slot. Let's talk again. But she went back and apologized. Sorry for what I said this morning. I, you know, I was not, you know, listening well. Let's have the meeting. Okay. 
And that's something that you can celebrate. So we are four minutes beyond the time. These are seeds for you. As always in Buddha CEO, we encourage everyone to make their own research. Um, but this is something you can teach around. You can explain to your kids and you can watch out also how you behave in front of your kids. So maybe you can avoid some unconscious bias programming uh, in, uh, in them. And it's gonna help them program, you know, maybe better uh, unconscious belief about how powerful they can be and how inclusive they can be. Thank you. Um, I think the official session is closed. And I will turn to uh, Hatina Vell. I'm happy to take some questions for the coming 10 minutes. All right, I think uh, it's going to, it's like uh, all uh, very five stars, right? The, the rating, if you say, it's all five. So the meditation, it's really wonderful. I think every, um, most of the participants also acknowledge over the chat, really, it's happy to see. Personally, I'm also able, not able to come to, you know, the. The moment you said, okay, come back to this. And I was just, oh, okay, why can't we push further, further? That's what it was for me. So it is really wonderful meditation and uh, I, understanding how to overcome. And uh, yes, we have to feel the abundance and then uh, we feel the oneness because it's very, very important. Because uh, when I started meditation earlier before that, oh, uh, this person is from this particular state and he's, uh, you know, the, from this part of the India. This is what I had. Uh, but after uh, meditation, and I, I could be able to feel the oneness. I don't see that uh, the before, you know, the kind of difference what I heard. And, uh, but yes, it is a continuous process. So it is consciously, I was just uh, riding a bike and then I was just making a judgment on the, all, uh, on the fly. Oh, this person is something looks like this. Maybe, you know, she's like that or something like that. That's what I made him. Then immediately another thought came, why I actually judge like that? Oh, I think I'm mm -hmm. having a belief that this is if this if because of the physical attire or something. If they are having like that, this is what uh, my program was that. So it is really, really very important uh, to have that uh, conscious of about our uh, thing. It's very, very important. And acknowledge your bias. It's very, very important. Yes, it's accepting. Don't fight with mentally and engage with others. Celebrate yourself. That's really wonderful. And I think the last, as mentioned, like avoid the unconscious program before you speak before the kids and everything. That's really, really awesome. Wonderful session, man. I'm really, really you. Uh, happy, you know, to listen to. And then, as I said, it is a music to you, you know, everyone. Yes. So you are uh, wisdom sharings and everything. Thank you. And yeah, let's, uh, uh, dear friends and masters, if you have any questions or something, yes, you can feel free to uh, raise your hand or you can put the question in the chat box as well. We can go. And but one one question I have I was in fact I was having um, there are two scenarios at least I felt with uh, uh, in the past two owners there was a, a at office like uh, yeah, the the person from the team was really uh, due to some his personal aspiration or something he could not actually be able to come to uh, make up at the work he just joined for two months or something immediately due to his uh, immediate uh, stuff. Uh, immediate uh, assignments or something he got somewhere outside he had to cut down and then the project but he just joined for two months and out of two months almost one month was of uh, leave and uh, uh, when i was asked you know give me some 10 pointers about you know the person predominantly to push it to the hr human resource team and so mm -hmm. that you know they will frame the story or whatever maybe to take some actions uh, uh, this one this is one scenario and uh, where, uh, you know, then I was just, uh, I don't want to give some, yes, he has done something, but giving something a negative talking about, you know, whatever he has done it. So that will kind of a judgment. This is one example. The second uh, one is uh, how to make, uh, you know, the, there is a two different things, judgment and opinion. So you have to give something, uh, uh, you know, make a, uh, not a judgment, but give an opinion. So how you, you see that uh, or how it can, you know, you can do that. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, so first, for the first example, uh, yes, no matter what happened, you always stick to the facts. 
uh, you know, if, if there is any challenge at work with, uh, with somebody in the team and some problems, uh, what I was doing is always first have a, a real discussion. Uh, and of course, the quality of my discussion with the employee was different after or you know, before after meditation. I was listening really and stick to the facts with no judgment. After, after that, stick to the facts and be, uh, again, open to the person about the options that will be in front of uh, this person. So being a meditator doesn't mean that uh, we, we can accept everything or every behavior. But in that case, when there is a family problem or a health problem, it's always good to know, to the, to know the facts. Um, and especially I am you know, more on the US culture then yes, we are with the facts and no judgment. And if the performance is low, it's a fact. How you, you measure it has to be clear with the person, but if there was no performance or no participation and so on, it's a fact also. So it doesn't mean that we need to make everybody uh, is absolutely great uh, in their role. A fact, it means his performance vis-a-vis -vis clear objective vis-a-vis -a, -vis a job role. Okay, so all of this has to be clear between the manager and the employee. But when it becomes complex, yes, we go to human resource because they see a tone of this situation. Hopefully they don't have unconscious bias, but we can have a good discussion with them. Sometimes it happens that somebody from human resource has judgment a little bit too fast about the situation. And that's where you can play a critical role in, uh, in having, yes, your opinion about it and saying, no, this is what happened exactly and so on. I'm describing the truth. Uh, you know, if there are three options, tell me, but I will let you know what is my opinion on what we should do, okay? So unconscious bias, fighting in conscious bias doesn't mean you don't have opinion. It's just, you have to make sure that your opinion are not based on unconscious bias. And it's always coming back to awareness. You know, I'm being aware of my awareness. I have consciousness. I have choice in front of me. My opinion is based. And if, if my opinion is based on something I believe I heard, but I don't have the facts, I have the honesty to say it. Okay, um, this is what I believe. Or my opinion is this. But, you know, maybe I need more research, you know, to get through it. But you can have opinion. And sometimes you need to have opinion, okay? It's just always trying to understand the view of other people, accepting them. And at the end, especially as a manager, when you do a round table, you might have five different opinions that you listen carefully. And then anyway, you still have to make a decision. So you explain the reason why you're gonna make this or this decision to let the team still be inspired and motivated and you are clear. We are going to do these options because we have to do this objective uh, with this amount of budget. So that's the decision to make, right? So yes, opinion, but not opinion based of, on unconscious bias. Opinion that are coming from your consciousness and for, from the facts and the information that you could collect. Wow, wonderful, okay. wonderful. Thank you. I, I have an opinion about vegetarianism. Clearly, because I have done all the research about, you know, economic stakes, marketing, fake news, you know, uh, and everything. So my opinion is everybody could make the choice to become a vegetarian. And that's the best for the planet. Now I keep listening. And what is key for me is that I don't have this unconscious bias taking control of me that everybody should be right away at the same stage than I am. I know people have a different journey, including my husband and my boys. So I have an opinion, but I don't let the unconscious bias or you have to do the th same as me taking over. I have respect for the journey of everyone. I'm not forcing, I'm explaining, I'm planting seeds. So that's the kind of things that you have to manage. And as you meditate, it's becoming easier and easier. True, true. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Yes, uh, dear friends, please raise your hand or yeah, you can put your question on the chat box. 
I see one, one uh, I try to motivate my 20 year, years old son to meditate. 22 years old son is, um, is a special animal. <laughs> so, yes, get on, so, you, uh, can, you, can, you can unmute. Yeah, I yourself. don't know who is, uh, you know, Kokil Vora. I don't know if she's there. Oh, if he is there, I'm sorry. I don't know if it's a woman or a man. You can unmute yourself, yes. Yeah. Yeah, unmute the phone. Just a second. Yes, and we can see you and hear you. Yeah. Hello. Hi, hi, Lawrence. Hello. <laughs> a special kind of species, my 22-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Though he has that bent of mind, because of course, uh, I do and I conduct workshops and all. But, you know, people are ready to listen, but your own son... <laughs> I, 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 uh, I feel very well what you are saying. Um, I could have my son who is now uh, he's turning 30. But when I started <laughs> meditating, um, okay, he saw me joy food and all of this and become vegetarian. So uh, I bought him a few books. Uh, he bought a headset. He, uh, he started to uh, do a little mindfulness because also, in his interview for a job, they were asking him systematically, uh, okay, you, you look like you have the right resume. Yes, you have done this, that. Okay. Now, tell me, how do you manage, you know, a uh, crisis? How do you manage um, outage? How do you find calm and peacefulness when everybody becomes crazy at the office? Tell me. And it was part of the interview. So the first time he got that, he realized, hmm, maybe mom has something that I should have listened better to. Yeah. Okay. So it came from the outside. Um, he was very supportive, very nice. He offered me, uh, you know, I, I started with PSSM. So he, he offered me, for instance, this pyramid, a beautiful pyramid and so on. But I couldn't get my family to meditate as I do. Um, and you know that the most difficult is, you know, for many of us is to have, the, you know, the direct partners or kids to do what we are doing. And especially before 25. After 25, they are in a life and so on. They listen more to us. And they start to see us that the world is asking for this kind of skill, what we call at the office. And that's maybe where you can take this angle of this is in IBM, mindfulness so meditation inside mindfulness was considered and still considered a success skill officially by HR. Okay. So it's a soft skills that is allowing you to be a better leader, a better collaborator, a better teammate, okay, to manage crisis. And in IT or, you know, in information system, there are crises that you need to manage even at 2 a.m. in the morning. So to be a better uh, colleague, uh, and so a better candidate. So when, you know, even if you are in the company and you want to take another job or a promotion, this will be part of your soft skills because usually your communication is better. You know, you communicate better, you are clear and so on. So that's part of a skill that differentiates you from others. And when we have our younger generation coming into the workplace, it's going to help them. It's same for somebody who wants to be an entrepreneur. You so know, he just because the, you need he's you on need the to take maybe this that. angle. Yeah, he's just finished his engineering and on the threshold of uh, taking a call, whether goes in for higher studies or a work experience, and you know he's that turning point in life. So I just mentioned. Uh, I mean, I you know how our kids are at that age. And uh, I don't want to uh, kind of uh, keep talking about it all the time, uh, lest yeah. it irritates him. <laughs> so I was just wondering how probably it will just come by experience that he will realize one day how important it is to just meditate. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, but just meditate for them, I discovered means nothing. So uh, they are looking for science. They are looking for people the same age. They are looking for role model in a, in a business or in engineering business and so on. So, um, you know, if they are studying, uh, you know, this is what will convince them. But they are living by the group. You know, until 25 years old, my son was not listening to me. <laughs> so, uh, and suddenly, I don't know why, but it, it, it changed. Uh, so, it, it keep, you know, and, and maybe there are books and so on, but orienting him to uh, uh, more the workplace and the value for the workplace or the study, okay, the memory, power, the brain, and so on. Uh, but it's, I can tell you, and, uh, you know, sometimes we do masterclass, you can, can follow one masterclass, maybe the, the turning point, right? Sometimes it happens to some of my colleagues didn't want to uh, go to the class we were organizing in IBM. And then suddenly they attended one that was a turning point. That was the ha-ha moment. Yeah. Okay. So it can, it can happen this way, uh, but it was a success skill differentiator. And in many companies like SAP, you know, GE, uh, you know, of course, I'm mentioning Western company. Uh, it, it was part of the culture and especially in the high tech, you know, the Facebook, the Google, the Amazon and so on. They have all programs of mindfulness. The Harvard, you know, uh, the Yale, all these U.S. university have programs and they are full. They are full. Okay. So it's uh, for now, just take it's one good uh, add-on to the resume and they might not say meditation they will say mindfulness mindfulness okay that's yeah. my recommendation you know in in ibm five years ago i could not pronounce meditation i could not was not in the culture yet and by the way you know john kabat-zinn introduced you know meditation in the u.s through the clinic um, in the 70s he explained in his books, and I saw him in conferences, that he couldn't use meditation. He was he called it mindfulness, or you know, stress reduction. Okay. Okay. So depending on the culture and the stage, and we respect the journey of everyone. You know, in resume, yes, mindfulness practice. Now in the US, if you don't practice mindfulness, they will more ask you, you don't practice? Come on, tell me you are not meditating. You know, in the journalistic world and in a, you know, uh, executive world, it's very, very recommended. Same for the Olympic athletes and all of these people. They are practicing meditation before a Formula One race, before a golf play, before a basketball play. So, you know, I took this angle through the business and the sports to talk to a 22 years old. We don't do the same teaching that what we do in, in the course here. Unconscious bias can be interesting because they might think about, uh, you know, how people are looking at him or how they are, you know, looking to others. It might be also helpful for, you know, future business. But continue to send your energy. Yeah, uh, maybe, that find, maybe find somebody else to, to talk to him, but Trying yeah. to for, I tried to force the first year to my family, zero results. I was desperate, but at the end of the day, you know what my uh, husband bought? You know, it's five years, so it was, I started five years ago. He bought a book this week. It's funny because I look at the book and I, it's in French, but I say, but I know this writer. He said, really? Well, so I opened the book and I look and say, Daniel, Everything in this book is what I'm teaching since five years. Look at that. Look at me. <laughs> okay. And, and the book is on his, his, his bed table and he's reading it. Okay. So patience. Yeah, that's it. Planting the seeds. Keep smiling. Talk about example, you know, that you heard about stories from business, uh, you know, for fun or from sports. It will help. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Great, to You're welcome. Connect. Great to connect with you, Lauren. Yes. Yeah, sure. Very good. Excellent question anyway. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank oh. you so much. And I see there is the same question from Gita. Yes, Gita, I'm also, yes. Yeah, you can unmute yourself, Gita. Hello, Madam Lauren. Hello. 
Yeah. So your son is in Nantes. Yeah. Wonderful. Where what are you is he doing? He's doing his. Painting. I'm uh, I'm two hours away by car from Nantes, and uh, I I'm going actually in Nantes from vacation for vacation near just you know, 45 minutes from Nantes. Oh, so right. yes, if he needs a call, I'm happy to do it. Okay, he's doing uh, um, post graduation in design there. Okay. And in all okay, you can speak French. Ah, now um, he has completed A2, A2 level, so he can speak a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. yeah, but you heard my my answers. Uh, it's, it's it's the same. Um, now the difference for your son is uh, what I can read is that yeah. meditation is really helping to integrate yes. different culture and to get the most of it mm -hmm. so uh, so that's also something that might help him how long is going to stay there um he studies her for two years and now he has already completed one year now okay. it's uh, in there right? uh, does he does he like it is it, he likes it yeah he likes it okay okay so for sure, uh, he'll be there for one more year. Okay. Well, I can, uh, you know, I, I'm happy to have, a, you know, a call with him, but um, same, you can, uh, you can say that you, you saw a French US lady because I have the two citizenship who is from business and yeah. thinks it's a very good differentiator to develop yeah. this, uh, you know, in the business language is soft skill of mindfulness yes. and you can only be mindful uh, or good at mindfulness if you meditate because that's the foundation of mindfulness so uh, and don't try to push on the kids even this age the 30 minutes 45 minutes you yeah. know it's it's always good to tell them that it can start by 10 minutes because that's it's better than nothing and also there are you know amazing app uh, I'm using something called Insight Timer, which is classified by Forbes magazine as the number one, by the way, uh, which is available. Music, guided meditation, you know, communities and so on. So also, um, you know, Buddha CEO is there with programs, but sometimes, you know, time zone and all of this, they might be able to use an app mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and get used to it when they will see that Oh, I'm clicking on the app, and as I'm clicking, there is 627,000 6, people at the same time with that me on this app meditating. Okay. Nice. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Gita. Thank you so much. Thank you. But keep Thank talking you. about it. Keep talking about it. That's sure. Sure. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you, Gita. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I think we're going to have to close. Yep. So shall we Something take care of the session now? Yes, I think so. Okay. Um, I want to thank everyone for your question, your participation, your energy uh, on my side. And I'm far away, uh, but I could feel the energy of the meditation. The group was extremely powerful. Uh, I had even difficulties to keep talking <laughs> because I was going like deep, deep, deep. So thank you for that. And as always, uh, my friend, thank you for hosting. And to Sai also is behind everything here to make sure everything is working fine. So all my gratitude to you. Thank you, Mark. It is a really wonderful session. I think we all enjoyed. And then uh, thank you. We are all grateful for you for this wonderful session and then wonderful meditation as well. So it is a really, really a blissful meditation along with your great wisdom sharing as well. I think we all learned that un unconditional bias as well, how to overcome it. And wonderful questions from the participants as well. Great interaction. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lawrence, man, for, uh, you know, from, uh, even in the morning you have joined out of the middle of the night and then you join again, you know, the coming back from the master class. It's really wonderful to listen to you always. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. And uh, Sai, thank you so much for being at the back end. Yes, you are uh, opening the bridge and then, you know, taking the, share, sharing the music and appropriately. Thank you so much. And thanks to all.
And thanks to all the participants for coming up and then Saturday. There might be so many other things that you can actually spend the time, but spending the time here and then making very most out of it, it's really, really wonderful to see. Let's meet again for that uh, second master, our next master class. And you can all join for the uh, tomorrow Sunday meditation, longer meditation also. And the same as same the bridge and uh, have your long meditation as well from Chandra sir. And uh, wish you all a yeah, good time, evening, and uh, spend a great time. Thank you. Thank yeah, you so and much. If I may, I will have a last word that just yeah. came to me. We talked about unconscious bias. Never forget that you can have unconscious bias about you. Okay. So it's also to help you stop the negative dialogue, chatterbox about yourself. We all have unconscious bias about ourselves that get got sometimes from one message or whatever our experience from, from the past, from the parents and so on. So, you know, it's also helping you to get the freedom about yourself. So that's a, a gift of today. Thank you so much and have a great evening or a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, thanks everyone. Thank you for your participation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gratitude before me, gratitude behind me, gratitude to the left of me, gratitude to the right of me, gratitude above me, gratitude below me, gratitude within me, gratitude all around me. I'm so grateful. 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 Gratitude before me. Gratitude behind. Gratitude to the left of me, gratitude to the right of me, gratitude above.